Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Hope everything is well with you guys. So uh, let me know if you can hear me, Ruby, 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 Ruby. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So hope everything is well. Nothing special tonight, just tea. I'm off coffee. So as usual, if you can give me some thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Also, let me know where you're from. So, Pedro Agma, where are you from? Oh, it says, Je suis de Quebec. Okay, he's from Quebec. So, it's cool. Let's just scroll back up. Deals, how are you? Croatia, 
What kind of drink, Steph? Whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you, your body can handle. In Virginia, USA. Kevin from Lakeland, Florida. How are you, Kevin? Hope all is well. Uh, hola. Como estas, amigos? Hola. Uh, very good. Okay, let's get this in order. Very cool. Lebanon. Nice. Hi, all. I finally... Hmm. Finally, I will finally assist my first live from Uncle Step. Uh, je suis à Québec, à Mouski, mon prénom est Pierre, à chanter. Hey, nice to meet you, Pedro. Thanks for joining the stream. Let me just scroll this a little smaller here. Yo, yo, yo. Let's see. Hello, some Uruguay, Sri Lanka. Well, uh, you can hear me. Thank you. Good evening, Steph. Got a beer in hand. Cheers. Cheers, the Greek guy. <laughs> The geek, geek wagon. Yeah, we had some nice snow today, eh? <laughs> All right, doing well. Can you hear loud, clear, good, good, good? La très vieille, la très vieille vedette, en passant, j'ai 50 ans et j'apprends le plus à programmer, ce, supposant. Supposement. Ah, there we go. If you don't know, that's French. Well, it's Québécois French. All right, guys, so um, no subject for tonight in particular. I just thought I would get on and do a, a live. If you have any questions, the opportunity to put them to me now. I've been, uh, I made the mistake. I bought a new uh, router because my old router was starting to mess up. Um, so I bought the new router, and uh, so I've having to reset my, my Wi-Fi speakers and my smart speakers and my lights. And I can't get my Hue Bridge to work, so my lights are all they're all messed up. So anyway, I took up like an hour or two, still not done. All right, so enough of that. Um, yeah, Chicago pulled up and you see, hey Steph, hey, how are you, Michael? Deals, welcome to the stream. So I don't, again, I don't have anything in particular. Um, this is free for all tonight. If you have any questions, I'll answer them for the next little while. Uh, let me just start with the typical stuff. So if you're a total beginner, you want to learn web design, you can check out my book. Um, I promote it not because I make money with it. I don't. I got paid a flat fee, so I don't benefit. It's just, I, it's a good book. I wrote it years ago, but it's still 100% up to date with regards to what I teach in here. So for people who like reading, this is it. You can get it on Amazon over the world. Um, if you are, that's for total beginners. If you are intermediate level developer or beginner intermediate rather you should do this book here refactoring this is the java version links below there's also a javascript version this is just a way of how to write cleaner code how to clean up code this takes you to the next level hey matthew how are you man cool and finally i'll do my album my vinyl of the day this is going to freak people out a movie it came out oof, i don't know 30 years ago quentin tarantino film uh, pulp fiction great soundtrack Mm. So I recommend uh, listening to the soundtrack to Pulp Fiction. Lots of good, uh, lots of good tunes on here. And uh, if you're an audiophile, it's actually very good. Strangely enough, it's all kinds of different uh, artists from from the '50s to the '70s to the '80s. So you might check out the Pulp Fiction soundtrack. All right, we took care of that. Ah, do, 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 do. Right, let's go back up. SaaS business in B2B or B2C, what's better? There's no one that's better, you know. Um, there's pros and cons to B2B or B2C. So if, pe if people don't know, SaaS is software as a service business. B2B means business to business. So you're directly dealing with business or B2C where your business is selling to clients, uh, retail. Um, so for example, with Studio Web, I do both. So I have a lot of school districts that I deal with. So that's B2B, well, quasi-government, the school districts, what's well, government. So I deal, it's kind of like a business. So I deal to, with businesses. And I also have business as well. I have um, uh, code camps and stuff for after-school programs who use uh, Studio Web. Um, yeah, so I do that. And I also do B2C where I people buy my courses directly or they buy my mentoring programs or my certification program. So I do both. The advantage with dealing with business, typically, um, well, not typically, it's always a much bigger sale um, with uh, the type of business that I do. There's a lot of renewals. 
So that's kind of cool. So you make the sale and it can go on for many, many years, if not much longer. And, um, but those type of deals usually take longer to get. They're harder to get because you have to deal with bureaucracies and uh, you have to deal with uh, many decision makers. Where if you're selling to an individual, it's one person you got to convince. So it depends. You have to play around, see what you like. If someone has a fancy budget, do you recommend three 27 inch monitors, one ultra wide monitor for web dev development? Ah, that's very good. Hmm. Um, I would recommend that you, with the fancy budget, you get the highest quality monitor possible. Uh, best pixel density, best quality. Uh, that's going to go a long way to managing you know, eye fatigue and so on. Now, between 327 versus one ultra wide, I would lean towards the 27, the 327s, because you have more a little more flexibility there. And typically, 127, which is I'm working on here, is enough to code on, and then you can have your your menus, your palettes, and you know your other windows that you might have to open on other, what you'll look at once in a while. But one big one, I would lean towards 327s, but I would have to look at what's out there now. No, I actually got, um, I'll show you the router I got. Hold on. So I'm not endorsing this. Oh, let me see. So I'm not endorsing, I don't know, I just installed it like an hour or two ago. This thing, Deco, it's supposed to be really good. I don't know. Um, my other router is like three years old. It was Google router, worked great. It actually shows, I did some tests, it actually shows better throughput than this. But the problem is it start, it, it would just fail and I have to restart it and I'm doing it more and more often. So we'll see how this goes. So I got this thing, it was on sale, so. Uh, why not Linus Tech Tips, my fellow Canadian from out west, they recommended it. But I have no opinion that at this point. I do not endorse. I just put it in. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I get any uh, speed warnings with this uh, particular setup here. Okay, let's go on. Matthew, hey, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Bonne nuit, Stéphane. Uh, greetings from Sunrise Floor. Hey, thanks for joining the stream. Appreciate the thumbs, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Who was that handsome guy you talked to on Instagram? Well, he's the he was San Diego's most famous developer, apparently. Um, yeah, so I if you check on Instagram, I did a live with uh, Matthew Smith there, and we talked about some really good stuff. Uh, it was about forty five minutes. Um, yeah, I put a link to it in my uh, YouTube uh, community section, so you can go watch that too. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Hello from. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Very cool. I want to visit Malaysia. I did a lot of, uh, back in the day, I did a lot of Silat, uh, which is a native Malaysian and uh, Indonesian martial art. Very cool. Uh, well, there's many types of Silat. I did a, a couple of types. I would like to say thanks for your advice and content. Hey, no problem. Chantha. I hope I said that right. Uh, Mohammed Baki, do you have three? Do you have a top three from your complete entrepreneur ten business ideas? No, uh, no, no. I don't have it. It depends on a lot of a lot of times what business you get into depends on your personality. Depends on how you who you are. Some people will prefer this type of business. Some people prefer that type of business. So, for example, I have a good friends of mine. They have one of the most successful restaurants in town, and it's now becoming a chain. And uh, they love the restaurant business. I would never do it. You have to get up at uh, four in the morning and go and uh, cut cut and prepare all the food and for the day. It's a lot of work, but they love it. They love hanging around in the kitchen and doing that kind of thing. For them to do what I did, I've done in my career, be in front of computers, writing code, that would be death to them. So you have to choose uh, the types of businesses, uh, whether you want to freelance or you want to... Uh, build a big business with lots of people working on you. That's a personal choice. Hmm. So, hello, hello, hello. Greetings, Kuala Lumpur. Have you experienced any ageism as a 169-year-old? Uh, no, because I don't work for anybody. 
I was wondering, I am wondering if, if, if my being 129 would be held against me as a junior dev. I've seen videos where they mentioned this problem, so I'm wondering about this. Well, it depends on what your background is, right? If you like played video games for 110 years and you don't have a professional career before that, it might be difficult for you. But like, uh, you know, there's people in this chat who had no background at all in technology and went from a totally different industry uh, into coding in their 40s and they were fine, they're doing great. Uh, is full stack web development dying? No, I think it's probably growing. To rent or buy a property, that is the question. I know YouTube is filled with answers on this topic, but I'd like to know your opinion. Again, it depends on what you want to do. Um, like uh, clearly, clearly in the last 50, 60 years, buying a property was beneficial overall because they just kept going up, you know, with some exceptions here and there. Um, the big advantage I'll say of buying is that you're building equity. So if you're not a saver, it forces you to save because you're paying down your mortgage. Uh, number one, number two, uh, typically when you, uh, if let's say I, ha I own a condo here in a nice building. So the owners respect the building and respect their units because they own it. So you have a certain uh, cleanliness as a result of that. Whereas in rentals, depending on where the rental is, because people are renting, they don't care so much about the property as it would if it was their own. So you can see where I'm going with that. Um, yeah, but the other option, the other is that the advantage of renting though is that you don't have responsibility. If something breaks, it's not your problem. Uh, burns down, it's really not your problem. Uh, you can leave pretty easily. You don't have to sell it to leave. Uh, you know, as a general rule, I would say if it's not a strain, I would buy because you're just building up some wealth there. But if it is a strain, uh, don't buy. You don't want to ever put. You don't want to ever be house broke. You know, meaning where you're, all your money is being put in just maintaining the uh, the payments and maintenance on the property. So, yeah. Uh, and if you do buy, make sure you put a minimum of 20% down. I know you a lot of places you can do 5, 10, 15, but try, minimum 20% down. And you got to work hard to pay it off as quickly as possible. You don't want to, you can take a 25 year, 30 year, but you want to really pay it off quick so that uh, you don't have that debt hanging over you. When you own property, when you own the place you live, your cost of living drops quite a bit and you have a sense of security. That's the other thing. There's a psychological advantage to owning because you own it. So it gives you a lot, a lot of flexibility there. As long as the house is not overpowering, as long as the house or the, the unit uh, is not costing you too much. Is, you know what I mean? Uh, sorry for my bad English. I have longer questions, so I will send in too far. Okay. I suffer from sleep apnea which I have not treated for years. As a result, my cognitive abilities have significantly declined. Uh, will learning programming, among other things, improve my brain cognitive abilities? Do you have advice for regeneration? Well, learning anything will help with your cognitive capacity because you're going to create new neural pathways. That said, the sleep apnea has to be resolved. I don't know what the cause is. Um, if you are uh, overweight, you got to get rid of the excess weight. That will be a that's often enough. I don't know what your situation is, but that's often enough a, a reason why people have sleep apnea. But work on that sleep apnea. Diet will play a big role. Get rid of carbs from your diet, sugars from your diet. That would help, believe it or not, with your sleep apnea over time. But yes, short answer is learning anything new, it's not exclusive to coding, will help with uh, your cognitive capacity. Eating different types of food, believe it or not, will do that. Eat different types of exercise. The key to uh, increasing cognitive capacity is to uh, introduce yourself to new experiences, all kinds of new experiences, so that your brain is forced to create new neural pathways and to uh, adapt to the new experiences. Let me get this going. Uh, well, hold up, wrong way. All right. Hope that makes sense. Uh, Mir, get on that. I have SA. Uh, do developers retire early if they invest? Save and invest properly. Yes, they can. I did. I was fortunate enough. Uh, I talk about. I've talked about it in several videos where 
I discovered uh, the solution to early retirement. That is uh, when you start making the extra money as a coder to not spend it like a maniac. I uh, lived for six years or so in a 550 square foot apartment, very small place, uh, because I liked it a lot. It was in a great location, 25 stories up, beautiful view of the city, but it was relatively inexpensive. Um, and I, and when I could have gotten much bigger places, but I decided to stay there because A, because I enjoyed it, and B, because I was saving so much money. So instead of increasing my lifestyle, I just took all that money and just started saving and saving and saving and saving. So some years I was, I could save 80% of my income. So when most people, if they're lucky, they're saving 10% a year, um, you know, and I, here's the equation I give. So if most people are saving 10% a year uh, to reach retirement at 65, after five years, they've saved half their salary, 50%. But if I'm saving 50% a year, in one year, I do what takes them five years. In two years, I, I do, in terms of savings, what takes them 10 years. In three years, it takes... I do what takes them 15 years. Now, the numbers are not perfect because salaries go up and down and all this kind of stuff. But nonetheless, you can see how uh, just having a well-paying job and not going crazy with your spending, being a little bit frugal for a few years can put you way ahead of the game, way ahead of the game in a short period of time. Trust me, uh, being that I'm 169 years old, I can tell you for sure the five years goes by like, like this when you're in the game. So that's what I would say. If you want to retire early, uh, level up your skills so you become valuable. You don't want to hustle garbage skills. You want to hustle valuable skills. Coding is valuable. And then you want to, when you start making the extra coding money, don't spend it like a maniac, like a drunken sailor. Start investing and saving like crazy. And trust me, you'll be happy for it. Do you think it's still worth learning web development now it's kind of saturated? It's not saturated, by the way. What path do you think I should go to get started in Python? with Python? And I've tried everything. What can I specialize in? Well, just start looking at your local job market. Don't take my word for it. I doubt web development is saturated um, in your market. And then start, you know, see what where the jobs are at, see what the, where the demand at, is at, and then start learning accordingly, right? Emmanuel Castillo. Dilo, sleep apnea makes you have bad sleep, man. Yeah, I know. I have a good friend of mine who has it. I was just trying to go to a doctor to get a CPAP machine to help with your sleep. Yes, of I assume that you had, you're possibly on CPAP, but also consider things I was suggesting as well. Having a hard time finding first job with HTML, CSS, JS, and React. Should I start learning back-end language like C-sharp or stick to it and focus on perfecting my front-end skills? Thanks. Well, you can watch a few videos where I've done. I talked about getting your first job. Um, learn a back-end language, you know. Um, I would definitely learn a back-end back language. I would learn JS on the back-end. I would go Node uh, over C-sharp. If you want to work for small business freelance, I would go PHP over uh, JS. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think I think Emmanuel is correct. I would concentrate on fixing the sleep ab apnea uh, if you can. I know you've been on it for a while. But some, I don't know, I don't know what effort you've done. I assume you've done some, but that's the, that's the key to it all, by the way, is getting your sleep apnea resolved. So if you're overweight, uh, you're eating bad food, that's one thing I would do. If you don't have a, a, a machine there, that will help as well. Uh, it's complex. I'm not a medical doctor, so. If you had to choose one OS for the rest of your life, which one would be Mac, Windows, Mac? It's more stable. I prepared those questions yesterday. I got to extract from those 160, 169 years of wisdom. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've used all the op major operating system: Linux, Windows from 3.1 up, uh, Mac OS, Mac OS 9 and up, um, uh, iOS, Android, and uh, what else is there? Chromebooks, uh, even OS X, uh, which was DOS, and then there's OS X, which is IBM, or OS 2, I think it was called. I forget now. Uh, what is the best long-term strategy to learn code for a beginner or for a non-tech background person? Um, 27 minutes every day, 27 minutes, 27 minutes, 20 minutes a day minimum. Um, 
the best solution, long-term strategy is to learn from uh, my, uh, my full stack courses. <laughs> uh, get you, will get you up and running super quick. So I want to get my first freelance jobs under my belt. There is a food truck park next park next to where I live and none of them have websites. Should I try and make a website for them, for them all or do it one by one, do it one by one, approach them, offer for free, you know, and, uh, and run it as you should. Um, I talk about that in my freelance course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. Oh, by the way, uh, if you guys can give me some thumbs, I'd appreciate it. Uh, what do you see the future of full-stack development? Will it still exist in 10 years with all the AI development? Should I go to learn machine learning data science? Um, I think, interestingly enough, I think web development is going to be one of the last uh, stacks, if you will, to go away because it's a bunch of disparate things that you got to put together whereas other types of development it's more self-contained if you do ios self-contained android self-contained uh the data science machine learning i imagine is self-contained as well i've only talked to people who do it i'm not a, not my field so that's my thinking on that can escape linus ever ha huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Linus Tech Tips. He, uh, that's where I, a friend of mine recommended it, and I found Linus Tech Tips, and uh, away we go. Uh, you can get a course through self-learning. It really depends what on your wants and financial ability. Is tech, is tech sales worth it? If you're good at sales, you can make a heck of a lot of money in tech sales. Hey, Steph and chat. Uh, hey, how are you? What do you see the future of full stack development got on that one? Do you have any advice on monetization methods for freelancers in addition to websites? Hmm. I would start um, looking at developing your own SaaS products. That's what my uh, suggestion is. Another thing you do, but it requires commitment and time, start hosting. But there's some pros and cons to that. Uh, if you want to get into hosting, you can make some money there. Uh, yeah, you can also partner with hosting companies where it'll give you a kickback if you bring people to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just finished the full stack bootcamp two weeks ago. And surprising, I have my first interview in one week. But I know I'm not ready. I haven't done Lee Code either. Anything you suggest, I can do to cram. Well, first thing to do is find out what this company, what they're working on, and then go study that, what it is, whatever it is they're working with in terms of technology. Any thoughts on three IT-related banks collapse Silvergate's SVP signature? Um, so having no insider knowledge and only paid barely any little attention to it, I think um, the banks were just mismanaged. Um, I think these IT banks had a lot of VC money in there. Um, I don't know if they would have been in contagion, a contagion or not, whether they would have taken down other banks. I'm not, I don't think so, as far as I understand, but I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it too closely. Um, it's normal. After you have a boom cycle, you're going to have failures because during the boom cycle, you have what is called mal investment, M-A-L investment, which means stupid investment. You know, it's like people win the lottery, they start spending all kinds of money on crazy things, you know. They start buying giant gold watches and, uh, and super ex Bentleys and all these crazy things. And then two years later, they're broke. Um, companies do that too. When, when money is flowing, they start spending like crazy. And then uh, they take unnecessary risk, uh, whether it be banks or tech companies. And, s and then when the... Uh, when the economy starts tr turning the other way, people get caught with the pants down. Also, I have seven months experience working in FE job and want to start freelancing. How should I set up pricing for websites? I did get your freelance course and loved it. I'm ah, glad you liked the course. Local pricing, man. Local pricing. You got to do a little bit of research on that, you know. I talk about that, how to set your, your cost you know, and uh, in terms of your time, and you just take it from there. 
I've been studying web dev for a year and a half and made multiple projects and applied to jobs in freelance, yet got got a huge amount of rejection emails, which got me devastated. Even freelance never responded. Well, you got to just, I, I don't know if your, your, your web design needs work. I don't know how you're presenting yourself. Don't give up. Uh, it's normal. You got to get in the ring and, and fail. You know, you have to get in the ring and fail in anything in life. So it's normal. Rejection is just part of the process. Just try to ask questions. When you get, if you can get answers, why did you reject me? What's wrong? You know, and just keep working towards your goal. You'll get there. I had a agricultural diploma. Then a business worked. Then a business worked in R and D, agriculture stuff, and then real estate. Then switch it. Uh, switched to IT as dev, but it wasn't easy. But now I'm working in my second company. All right, that's cool. You got that background will come in handy, I think, later on. Is JavaScript replaceable in the future? I don't think so. It's just so widely used now. I, I doubt that it's going to be replaced. What do you think of studying AI as a bachelor's degree? Can't can't go wrong with that. Shameless plug time. I'm in Steph's boot camp today. Pushed my client's code to the internet. It was incredible. If you are on the fence and joining a boot camp, just know he's helping me become a pro. Hey, cool. I appreciate that. Great green. Congratulations on uh, putting your client's code out there. Hey, Steph, what do you think about blockchain uh, as economic alternative for developer jobs regards? Um, I think it's a niche technology. Um the hype, hype of it has kind of fallen off, as you noticed. A few years ago, blockchain was going to change the world and cure cancer. And now it's kind of, um, you know, it's not going away. Distributed database systems are useful, but I think it's pretty niche stuff. Uh, super chat. Thanks. Thanks for the super chat. I am currently learning Java for an exam to be accepted into a boot camp. And currently in boot camp for JS stack. Any advice on what to focus on? I would focus on one thing at a time. Do your boot camp in JS and complete that. Learn your JS well, and you won't need um, you won't need to go to another uh, a Java boot camp. You'll be able to learn Java fairly quickly on your own. Uh, GTP GPT four. It's so over, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, no. If uh, only beginners to programming think GPT four is the end of programming, it's not. Trust me. Yosef Abraham, how's your LinkedIn, I resume, and your resume. Yeah, exactly. I would say work on that for a week or two, improve everything there, and try again. Yeah, that would be a good advice. Is Android going to be swallowed up, swallowed by web devs? Is it worth learning Kotlin for an entry-level job? Check, look at the job market. Where's the, uh, where's the opportunity, you know? Uh, I believe that web dev will encroach more and more on native mobile development just because of its flexibility. But again, you learn Kotlin, you do it for a couple of years, and then you find it it's dying away, then you just pivot to something else. It'll be pretty easy. Hi, Stefan. I've started learning web development at college. I feel it's sometimes very boring to move from programming language to another world without at least being good at it first. Any advice? Just write code, a little bit of code on the side, and keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the end goal. Consider uh, learning the new languages like push-ups because when you learn a second language, it will give you insight into the first because they're so related. When you learn your third language, it will give you more insight into the previous languages. So just keep going at it. I focused on PHP and Laravel more. more. Most of my main projects are made by Laravel. I was a bit anxious as I heard it's dying and not safe, but your feedback made me get into it. Loved it. Thanks, Steph. Ah, no problem. Glad I could help. How are we doing here? Okay. If I were starting out now, would you try to capitalize on the current AI bubble or would you focus on more predictable business models? I, I think AI has a lot of opportunity. And I think, I think you, can marry, you can marry AI with traditional web. So have you deliver... AI services via web. And uh, so I think they're not, what's the word? They're not mutually exclusive. Is that it? Uh, so you can combine them both perhaps, you know? Yeah. 
I remember you said uh, that you learned Silat once. I did, yeah. I have a professor in my university who practiced Krav Maga, Krav, Krav Maga, excuse me. I find it amusing when people seem to to be harmless, turns out to be someone who can hurt. Well, it depends. Yeah, Krav Maga guys are trained pretty hard, so that's uh, usually a pretty good indicator. What do you think about learning symphony instead of Laravel in 2023? I haven't looked at uh, symphony lately, so I don't know. All I know is that in terms of the uh, developer space, Laravel is still, I think, the dominant framework. Um, we use it for Studio Web, works fine for us. Uh, although some people said it's getting a little slow. I couldn't say, I would have to talk to my lead dev about that. Do you invest in index funds? Yes. I don't have, I don't have, we don't have 401k, but uh, we have something similar. But yes, index funds is the key. I think there's a difference between personal one and a corporate one where someone has a job. Is that right? Um, yeah, there are certain tax, a 401k is a U.S. thing. I'm not a U.S. citizen, but as far as I understand, a 401k is a way to shelter your money from taxation. So then you take, pull it out of retirement. I believe that's what it is. And then you invest whatever you want. We have a similar thing in uh, Canada called, um, I forget what it's called all of a sudden, because I have a corporation. I do it in a different way. Uh, it will come to me. I enjoy watching your streams. You have a lot of wisdom. You make me feel like everything is going to be okay in life. Everything works out. It does. It does. You just got to plan a little bit, manage your health, manage your money, uh, and have a balanced lifestyle and everything will be cool. Thoughts on working for defense contractors in terms of career trajectory as a software engineer, uh, SWE and SE. Well, right now, uh, fortunately, there's a lot of money in the military industrial complex, so you probably can, you won't do badly in terms of financial anyway. What's your opinion? Stack, Angular, Node, Postgre for web dev, Electron apps. Just look at the demand. Look at the demand. I choose stacks based on the needs of the project. And, uh, but if you're looking at it in terms of jobs, I would just do a little research on the job opportunities. For, but somebody pointed out in um, the previous stream, uh, they were a junior programmer, never had a job before, and uh, they learned Ruby on Rails, Ruby, and they got a job. So the point of that is that there's not as very many Ruby jobs, but there might be a lot less Ruby developers. So that's a, a strategy that you may want to look into where you learn a niche technology that may not have a lot of demand, but they may have a lot less developers. And it's a way to get your foot in the door as a junior developer to get that first job, which is the hardest. Once you get that first job and you've done your year, a couple of years, and you got that experience, then it's like red carpet in terms of all of the other jobs. So yeah, that's a strategy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would do, if you would do a master, which would you choose, cybersecurity or data science? Data science. What do you think about web development for 34 year old mathemat mathematics graduate? Man, if I was, could be 34 years again, I would, uh, I would give away all my, all my money Everything, if I could be, if they could turn back the clock and make me 34 again, 100%. So you have a long way to go. So yeah, you, you could be up and running within a year, you know, so go for it. I know how you feel. I remember when I was like uh, 20, I thought, oh, I wasted my teens. And when I was 30, oh, I wasted my 20s. And when I was 40, oh, I wasted my, my, my 30s. When I was, you know, goes on. Should I still continue being a PHP developer or move to uh, on writing Laravel? Well, Laravel is PHP. You mean you mean uh, uh, vanilla PHP? If you want to develop any apps of uh, any heft, you want to use a framework. So I would learn Laravel. How much important software architecture before start a project? How important is software? Well, you don't want to go crazy with it. You know, it depends on the depends on the project. How big it is. You know. Um, typically, I tell people when you're developing your alpha version of your project, you want to get it out quick and dirty because you don't really know what's going to happen in terms of how people are going to want to use your app until people use it. So don't spend too much time trying to architect the perfect system. You're going to be uh, in, in, you're going to find yourself in analysis paralysis. 
How much less are game programming salaries compared to web dev? I mean, any big difference? I don't know. Just go look at the salaries. Go to indeed.com. Look it up. Is, is having an AWS certification going to help me in any way if I might not go into cloud? Context, I am 17, trying to get certificates and start early moving up the ranks. Any ad more advice? Um, I would just get a job and start building things. You know, uh, I will learn a, a pro programming language. Uh, certification, I suppose, could help. Look, 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 again, look at the jobs. Look at the jobs. Are they looking for AWS certification? You know? And, uh, but at the end of the day, this, this world of programming and IT is very hands-on world, meaning they really value people who have demonstrable skills. So if I were you, I would be start trying to build things, websites and then web apps and so on. Uh, the more you do that, the more value, valuable you will become, the more quickly you will advance in uh, doing well. I'm learning web dev, and is there any way to earn some money only for some living costs? Uh, is there any way to earn some money? Yeah, do some small freelance jobs. You know, people set up their little websites, you know, set up their WordPress, set up uh, their Shopify. Uh, is WordPress development, building themes, plugins, web integration, good way to get into the industry? Yeah, I think it's good. How to become a pro coder or how can I improve my problem solving skills? I am self-taught Mern stack developer. Uh, start building projects. That's the number one thing. Start building projects. That's what I would do. Talk about WordPress development right now. <laughs> uh, why you'd want to learn Java unless you're going to work some old systems or banking? That's a lot. Java's legacy systems, meaning old systems, banking, uh, big corporations. Uh, I did a lot of Java work, and Java would be uh, the last um, language I would build anything new in. It's just too verbose. I, I love Java in the day, but I would not use it today to develop new things. How is U.S. Canada market versus for status for engineering related to coding like VR, AR, computer graphics, assembly, firmware, embedded systems? I don't have any data. I think VR, AR is very specialized. Um, assembly, you can always find jobs even though it's, um, it's specialized, but it's weird type of programming. Um, but there's a lot of money in it if you, wanna, if you can handle that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't have any data. Just I would just research. Does IT have a future? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Hey, how are you, Bruce? Hope everything's good. Hey, how's it? I'm going good. I'm going good. Except my my new Wi-Fi router is giving me trouble with all my uh, what's it called? All my smart lights, my Philips. Is email development a good entry point into coding, or is it too niche of a field? Well, if you have a job, somebody's willing to pay you to do email coding, then uh, email development, then do it. But continue to learn and pivot out of it. I am in the process of learning programming, and I am considering incorporating ChatGPT into the process. Do it. What is the best way to use it without hindering the learning process? Um, ChatGPT will allow you to have conversations with people, uh, with people with ChatGPT as you learn how to code. So if you run across problems, instead of having to spend 20 minutes looking through Stack Overflow or uh, scanning through pages on Google, just go to ChatGPT and you'll get your answers and you'll be able to ask it more questions in context. It's really very powerful. I would use it for sure. In fact, I'm gonna be doing uh, a little mini series on ChatGPT learning to code as soon as I find a moment. Uh, so Hello, I'll go staff. Please, why no jazz can be preferable to over C sharp? I just made my mind recently go pro. Probably in Node, but I really like to hear what's pros and cons. If you can help, please. Um, I'm under the impression, although I haven't done a study, but there's more flexibility in terms of jobs with uh, Node uh, and the web stack. Generally speaking, C sharp could do web stuff, but when you get into Microsoft C sharp uh, .NET and you do Java. Uh, JavaScript, you're typically thinking, uh, you're typically seeing larger organizations there. Uh, whereas if you do uh, web uh, with Node, you got a f more flexibility. But they're both good. You can't you can't go wrong with either. They're very similar in some respects. Rapid fire questions. Paradoxically, maybe AI will create more jobs, not less. 
100%. 100%. Am I crazy? Also, any thoughts on how to best capitalize on the AI wave? Thoughts on cybersecurity as a career path? Cheers. I would, I would jump the AI wave. I think the big opportunity is going to be implementing AI. So you might uh, create a specialized application uh, leveraging chat, GPT, or some other AI, and you deliver it through a web app. Uh, a good friend of mine is doing that. He's doing quite well with that. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I believe you're correct. AI uh, will probably create more jobs than they will destroy. So, for example, when computers came out, a lot of people are going, oh, my God, oh, my God, all those typewriter jobs, all those typewriter creation jobs are gone. And it destroyed that industry, typewriters, psh, gone. It destroyed uh, the courier business, psh, just about gone, right? Because uh, everybody starts sending emails as opposed to using couriers. Um, I could go on, but in its place, it created a whole bunch of other jobs, right? So I, I don't know what those jobs are going to be. But um, AI will present a lot of opportunities. So if I were you before, I wouldn't go into cybersecurity. I would, I would start really getting your head wrapped around the AI wave because you're going to see all kinds of opportunities will present themselves. I, I have a couple friends who are doing that now. And uh, yeah, one of, it, one of my friends, it's key to his business. Yeah. Super chat. Thank you very much. Tea on you guys. I appreciate it. I used to say coffee, but I'm off coffee now. How to go from freelance WordPress dev to C-sharp dev? Should I get a job first with Lamb Stack since I know PHP or just go straight for C-sharp jobs? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's problem with C-sharp jobs. Why do, you have your, why do you have your heart set on C-sharp jobs? Um, you probably should learn, since you already know a freelance web WordPress dev, since you know PHP, I would probably maybe learn some Laravel start doing some web apps, uh, maybe poke around with some C-sharp, but then reach out to some C-sharp companies, see, see what they're looking for. Do a little investigation. They're both good, by the way. You know? Stefan, I'm glad I caught you while live. What advice do you give for problem-solving skills? Um, well, practice makes perfect, first of all. Uh, that said, uh, what I used to, what I always do for problems, I, tr I always try to boil them down to their simplest form so i'll take a complex problem i'll break them into smaller pieces and then i'll solve each piece on its own so it's, what's daunting when you have complex problems you're looking at this big blob of complexity if you will and it can overwhelm you so what you do is you got to say okay i'm just going to solve this thing here and this thing here and this thing here and this way you start simplifying it that way that's basically what i do it's a I break down things into simpler components. And uh, so you don't want to get stuck on anything. I'm learning JS, started building more complex projects, and I understand code and syntax mostly, but I suck at problem solving. How did you get good? You, you just do that and you start practicing. As you write more code, as you build more and more complex systems, things will become obvious to you automatically. Uh, strangely enough, I had that in fighting as well. You know, when I started sparring and I started fighting, um, th those experiences teach you a lot, you know? And then you start realizing things that uh, a teacher couldn't teach you necessarily so quickly. So jump in the ring. That's what I suggest. Uh, yes, I actually got some feedback on my resume and I utilize these feedbacks to improve both, but most of the feedbacks related to my lack of experience and non-tech background. Ah, Yusuf. I watch my previous videos where I talk about how to get your first developer job. I give you step-by-step -step, uh, um, suggestions. How are we doing? Hey, Uncle Steph, I hope you keep feeling better. I'll be praying for your good health. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Being 169 years old, you look like a teenager. <laughs> it's the yoga. It's the yoga. I started back into hot yoga again about a month ago. I'm taking it easy. You know, a couple times a week, once a week. Hot yoga. Um, hot yoga in the downtown of a big city at 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, presents its own challenges, I have to tell you. Anybody who's done hot yoga knows what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. 
I forgot to mention something every important. I really think you, Stefan, because you inspire me not to give up at a certain point after switching a 33 times. I felt down, but your vids helped me. I'm glad I could help you, uh, Mr. Muhammad Ali. Um, yeah, you know, just keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it, making progress, progress every day. That's why I have that 20 minute a day rule. It, it just it keeps the ball going. It keeps the momentum going. Yeah, trust me, I have days like that too. I have days like that where it's like, oh, it's not going good. But I do my minimum. And if that minimum doesn't turn into anything more, that's it. I've done my minimum. Then I go do some exercise or something else, you know, something productive. Should I quit uni and go for full-time junior dev job if the pay is good? Depends on your long-term goals. Is university free or not? How long do you have left before you finish your degree? Do you have a job offer? Uh, does it, is the job at a place where, well, where you're learning some cool stuff? These are all questions you have to ask. Uh, asking again, probably you missed previous question. I don't know which one was that, Ryan. Try again. Could you give a brief explanation on the importance of knowing web design along with web development? Well, if you're going to do web development, you have to understand the mechanics of the front end. You don't have to be a great designer. Just, just know how to lay out pages, you know, know how to lay out uh, responsive sites, you know, using uh, media queries and so on. Understand Bootstrap, uh, Grid, CSS Grid, uh, Flexbox, so that when you work with front end developers, uh, you'll be able to communicate with them and deliver what they need. So you have to learn just a little bit. You don't have to be a pro. It doesn't have to look amazing, you know, but you have to know a little bit. Love your course and all your videos. Hey, I appreciate it, Andrew. Thanks. Uh, knowing English and French and also being a software developer at age 43 will be easy to move to Canada with my family. If you know French and English and you're good with the French, um, Quebec, where I am, they're always looking for French speakers. So it will uh, open up more doors than otherwise. Hi there, nice to be here again. Hey, this is the Ruby boy. This is the Ruby guy, Gabriel Ruby. Uh, sorry for the grammar. My last video I was typing from a cell phone and it was trying to convert everything back to, into Spanish. Yeah, no problem. Did I remember correctly, Gabriel? You're the guy who got the entry level jobs at Ruby Dev. Let me know. I think it's you. If the amount of money in your bank account was your social security, how much money would you have? I'm a full stack dev working on it already and a quantum physics enthusiast at Harvard. Wow, very cool. Do you think of a work field where I could combine both passions? How would you go about making that transition? That's interesting. I don't know. I did grade 10 math twice. That's how bad I am at math. So with regards to quantum physics, um, I'm not a good judge. I think that might, that might take you into like, uh, AI research, in all honesty. You may want to look into that. They're looking for people. I think you could do well there. How's your health, good man? Take a look at BioOptimizer Magnesium Breakthrough. I will. Health is getting much better. Much better, as you can see. You know, um, I've it's diet, drinking a lot of water, trying to sleep better. Um, now incorporating more and more exercise. I walk 8,000 steps a day, try to get into 10. Uh, now I got into hot yoga. Uh, now that the spring is almost here, I'll be biking around the mountain the city again. Um, I'm thinking of actually I might I, I might go do some jujitsu. I'm not sure about that or maybe go do some boxing. I don't want to do boxing because I don't want to be tempted to jump in the ring again. But I love boxing. But I might do some jujitsu. Uh, training in a variety of sports lightly is very good for you. Good for your brain, good for your body. When are you coming out? When are you coming out with a float-based layout tutorial? When are you coming out with a float-based layout tutorial? I teach floats in my CSS course, I believe. Chat GPT is fun. Just don't forget to proofread before pasting your code. I learned that the hard way. Oh yeah. I like the damn video, guys. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, give me some likes there. Uh, I've learned some Python and some Django, not made anything by myself yet. I want to look into making an e-commerce site. Would you recommend sticking with that or jumping to PHP? Love your videos. 
If you like Python and Django, go with that. But I think that uh, PHP Laravel is a lot easier to work with overall. So I've been told. I only I looked at Django many years ago, so I don't have any opinion about it today. Hello, hey, from Vancouver. How are you? Currently, I'm understanding Java better than HTML and CSS. Does your full stack web dev course go into detail as a brief overview? It goes into detail about HTML and CSS, hundreds of lessons, over a thousand quiz questions when you throw in the JavaScript. So you'll learn a lot. You won't need to take any other courses after you do mine uh, in terms of those languages. Uh, hey, Steph, looks like... Uh, hey, Steph... You look like a mafia boss today, laugh out loud. <laughs> well, I am from Montreal, you know. We have a lot of mob here. I grew up with mob guys. Uh, my secret to you appearance, uh, plenty of... Okay, what's going on here? This guy, uh, Nevin, I think he's drunk. Uh, I need to do my yearly career talk with my boss. I don't know how to answer these questions. I suck less... Is suck less... A good answer. <laughs> yes. I suck less than I did last year. Yeah, yeah, say. Say, I'm improving every day. Every day I'm improving and I'm exploring more and more avenues of uh, development, getting a deeper knowledge stack such that I'm able to improve the quality of the output I deliver to the company. What's your take on deleting the powered by WordPress line on templates? Nobody cares. We used to care about those things back in the day, but nobody cares. Try again. Do you have any regrets about career choices you made? Any errors we should avoid making? Um, you know, my career has always been entrepreneur. Last job I had working for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. I have no regrets about that job. That was a fun job. Um, after that, after, 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 excuse me. After that, I've always had companies. Have I made mistakes with businesses? All the time. That's normal. It's part of the process to uh, fail in businesses. I've had many, many uh, business attempts fail. I've never failed because I always run them frugally and, uh, and lean. So that I, and, I, and I get them out into the market as quickly as possible. But I make, I make tons of mistakes. That's normal. Again, you just don't want to make any mistakes that will kill you. Um, that's the key to uh, to life. You always want to have backups, and you don't want to take. Even if you think your idea or what you're doing is guaranteed, you always assume there's risk. So you want to save and diversify. You want to be protected so that if something goes wrong, you're okay. Like it's like wearing a seatbelt. You don't assume you're going to have a crash, but you're glad you have it on if you do crash. So in life. Work towards your goals, explore different things. As you go along, keep saving and investing. Uh, make sure you stay healthy. This will pay off because time flies. As somebody said in a, some song, time is a thief. And uh, you never, next thing you know, 20 years has passed, 10 years has passed. And as long as you implemented that policy, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, right? Because you've accumulated over time, you know? But if you're always waiting to start this process, you may wake up at 50 years old, or 60 years old, like a lot of people, and be like, ah, I didn't do it, it's safe. So you don't want to be there. The younger you are, the quicker you want to get into this habit of, as I just suggested. You can watch previous videos where I go into details. How do you write quality documentation for projects? Use chat GPT. Keep them simple. Keep your documentation simple and to the point. Um, I should do a video on that. There's a bunch of tips I can give. Any advice on proposing a proof of concept to my manager? I'd like to incorporate chat, chat GPT into our applications, but should I talk to my managers first before building it? Yeah, I would probably talk to them, you know, uh, before building it. Um, I don't know your managers. Depends on their personalities, you know. Uh, explore, explore the business end of it as well. You know, not just the technical end, but the business implications of what you're bringing to the table. Uh, but surely, soon enough, you will have the instincts to check on what could be the issue. Hmm. 
not sure the context of that statement. Do you believe I can get front-end freelance job with just Mernstack? Why not, if you have a good uh, portfolio? Are there good opportunities for React developers in Canada? Oh, yeah. There's no, no question about that. My secret youthful, my secret to youthful appearance is uh, ax, Asta, whatever, Zathin, i.e. plenty of antio. Okay, stay away from the sun. That's why vampires don't age. Well, it's an Asian thing as well, right? Asians, they don't uh, like getting a lot of sun. And it does age you. You, you can watch some people, uh, meet some older people from the sunny parts of the world, uh, fair skins like me, and uh, they have uh, very wrinkly skin. I got a super chat. We'll get to that. Oh, an hour in. Okay, we'll be ending very soon. MX25, I appreciate that. Uh, on what age did you start programming? I started programming when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. Very light basic with my TI-99. But I didn't start really programming commercially until I was 22, 21, something like that. Um, but I was doing light stuff then. I really got into the mix in my mid-20s, I think. Something like that. Um, yeah. Steph, long time no see. Hey, how are you, Chris? Hope everything is well. What programs have you made for yourself to make tasks easier or just something cool you made for fun, excluding your learning platform? Uh, I haven't. I had no time. I've been working on other things. And um, right now, I'm much more of a process person. So I'm always looking at new processes. I understand software really well. So uh, I work on developing new workflows, new processes uh, within the context of what I do to try to speed up things. I look at new software uh, that might speed up things like ChatGPT, GPT, I'm very excited about, in fact, in that regard. It might speed up some things that I would do um, in hardware. Like I do these videos and you notice I have like 10,000 different mics and cameras. Uh, part of it's a hobby, but part of it is also I'm just trying to find tools that will expedite the process, uh, speed up things. Uh, I love leveraging chat GPT. That is, it's, it's there. Uh, Stefan, when are you making a TypeScript course? <laughs> no need. Do my JavaScript course, you'll learn TypeScript on your own. Um, what was I going to say? Slip my mind. What are you going to do? All right, so oh, you know what I'm going to do? This I'm going to I'm going to plug my Discord here. So let's get into this uh, the Code Long and Profit Discord channel. Here it is. Uh, highly regarded. We got I don't know we must have like over three and a half thousand people on here. So we got uh, all kinds of discussions and are even going into hardware. And uh, all level of developers in there. And uh, good group, good group. So I highly recommend, link is below. Check out the Discord. If you want a, a Discord channel filled with people who are uh, good people, you want to learn how to code, you want to collab maybe on some projects, check it out. Uh, it's a good place to be. Yeah, hold on. Matthew says, my output has been sucking lately. I have been taking on harder things. Well, that means you're just leveling up your game. You, uh, you'll you get back on speed again. Yes, yeah, true. Good people in coding and coddling and profit. <laughs> yeah, Matthew is a, is a, he's an administrator in there, in fact. So yeah, check it out. HTML and CSS and React enough for front end. Oh yeah, that's 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 pretty much front end. <laughs> Am I too old to pursue a career in software engineering, web development, etc.? I'm 43 years old. No, we have people on this uh, this uh, live stream right now who, at your age, got their first job in uh, software development. So no, not at all. Jump into it, Cat King. It's a good place to be. All right, guys, I gotta go see if I can figure out. Why my uh, Philips Hue lights are uh, are not uh, booting up for some reason. It should. Anyhow, 
Super mod, thanks you. Super mod. <laughs> it's true, super mod. All right. Cheers, guys. I'll leave you with my... Uh, uh, yeah, Matthew did get his job at 42. By the way, Matthew actually has a very popular uh, Twitter spaces. Put in your uh, handle, Matthew. You should go check out his Twitter spaces. Put your handle in the chat and I'll put it on screen. Check it out. He has big discussions. Like over 100 people will show up and they'll talk about all things code. And uh, yeah, so I'm waiting for Matthew to put up his, uh, his Twitter account. I tell you one thing, the older you get, the more you realize how much status matters. If they don't understand, give them the boot. Cat King, hit me up on the board on Discord. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, hit up, uh, join the Discord. I'll, I'll flash it again here. Woo! -hoo! Check it out. It's pretty cool. You have books, discussions. And, so, it's not just code, it's code mostly. But you'll get all kinds of discussions. It's very, uh, very engaging. Lots of people. It's very busy. Like just in the last, you can see in the last little while, all this conversations, right? We even have AI discussions as well. So yeah, I would, I would definitely check that out. There's Matthew's. Uh, there it is, Matthew sixteen in the Discord. Yeah, and his uh, Twitter handle, Matthew underscore WebDev. I invite you to join. You can get in on some big conversations there. All right, guys. Thanks for, go thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. Uh, always a good times. Um, if you leave a like, that's cool. Uh, under this video, on the replay, uh, let me know what... Um, let me know if you have any questions, any comments. All right. We'll talk soon. I'll leave you with my ASMR boat here.